Hey, it is the day of the Solar Eclipse 2024, and in Nashville, our hometown, welcome in. I'm Bill Cody, and this is the Magnolia Lobby Studio here at Gaylord Offering Land, and I'm sure the quadrangle, as I call it, out front will fill up with people later on today. Oh, folks yeah. who are staying here at the hotel, and uh, Charlie, you said they were actually encouraging folks to come out Oh, yeah, and watch the, they've got the, the, the special glasses for the eclipse, and uh, we're going to make a party of it here at Gaylord Opry Land. Can today. I pick some up so, before I leave today? Can I go uh, get some? I don't know. You That's said you were going to be napping. I might you have be napping. Creating your own eclipse. <laughs> that is true. About it'll, that time. it'll be dark in both cases. So for us, it's a little after 2 o'clock in a central time zone for, for Nashville specifically, and it's going to vary depending on where you are. And all in, all done by a little after 3 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kelly Sutton, she celebrated the weekend in Orlando with the Disney folks and some girlfriends who planned a, a weekend getaway. That's true. Uh, no guys, just nope. the girls. Just, just the, the girl girls. trip. And you kind of had that too this weekend. I did. One of my best friends from home of 23 years. She came to stay and come to Nashville so for the So since you were time. four, you've known yes. her? Yes. She was two. Wow. I was four. She came and stayed with myself and my roommate. And we took her all over the town, gave her the woo girl Nashville experience. Mm -hmm. The what uh, girl? The woo girl. Explain what that is. Uh, Well, all right. So when you come who, to Nashville. Who come to town and they may want to be a woo girl or yes. decide after what you yes. tell them that they don't want to be a woo girl. Well, we were the local woo girls we weren't quite the oh. open air uh converted school bus woo, woo did you know there were two varieties Broadway. of woo girls charlie oh, i think there's all kind of woo girls yeah yeah, yes. yeah. many yeah. varieties yeah. you think many Sally varieties. qualifies as a woo girl uh, she's the original uh, Cindy, uh, that is Cindy, true. Cindy, Cindy Lou Who. Yeah. <laughs> it was only Lou two Who. <laughs> from Whoville. Yes. Okay. And we went, we went all over town. We went to Eric Church's brand new bar on Broadway. It was the first weekend that it was open, and that was really cool. Uh, we took her all over East Nashville as well, just exploring and stayed out way too late every night, and my body has no idea what time it is so. right now. Were you with Morgan Wallen at any point in time at Chiefs? No, this was the day before this happened. That's your story. Yeah, that's, that's my story. That's the story you're telling. I, I'm sticking to okay. it. That's right. my story. I'm sticking Listen, to it. Listen, you think a chair's bad. It could have been the pig up on the roof. <laughs> there is there is a <laughs> massive fall. pig on the roof. Hard to believe, but Morgan is in trouble again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, he threw, yeah. a, threw a chair off the roof? Is that the deal? Uh, uh, what we hear? Apparently. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, apparently. Allegedly is the proper term. Well, if you were hit by it, it's not allegedly. Let's put it that way. Almost <laughs> hit the police. Apparently. Oh, did it really? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that wasn't good. Smooth timing. move, Morgan. Yep, yeah. yep. But a much bigger and safer party happened in uh, Austin, Texas. <laughs> and last that's usually night. not the case in Austin, I, Texas. I, at I would have to agree. Uh, the CMT Awards were last night. We're going to recap all of that fun action and who won coming up in entertainment in just a little bit. This is Coffee Country and Cody. Well, Mojo Magazine calls him <laughs> the godfather of Americana, the late Peter Cooper, our dear sweet friend called him Nashville's greatest 20th century rock and roll front man and a longtime friend of Coffee Country and Cody and the only one to ever bring us fresh eggs without yeah. charging. <laughs> this is true, yes. Yeah. yes. My daughter, my granddaughter charges. These are pro bono when, eggs. When I bring, pro bono chickens. When I bring eggs, you pay. When Jason Ringenberg <laughs> brings eggs, they're on the house. Yeah, and he wanna... brought colorful <laughs> eggs from Americana chickens, so they're green and blue and pink, so even better. <laughs> That's Thank right. Red, you. white, and blue. They're yeah. patriotic chickens. Perfect. <laughs> Our chickens are very patriotic. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's life like on the farm these days, man? What's your what's your life? Catch us up. We've got new music to talk about, I know, and an appearance uh, which we will talk about at the Brooklyn Bowl coming too. Right, yeah, I have a new record out. It's we're so excited about it. It's it's called um, "More Than Words Can Tell," and it's a duets. It's a tribute to the duets of Dolly Parton and Porter Wagner, um, mm -hmm. done by Victoria Leedke from England and me. Um, Victoria is an Oklahoma girl, but she's been living in England for for a long, long time. Oh, okay. So we we recorded it in England with English musicians and British musicians mostly. Uh, Victoria produced it, and we just had a ball uh, to to dive into the Dolly Porter catalog. People really don't realize how deep that is. Oh my goodness! It's just fantastic. Daddy so was it, an old time preacher man. If teardrops oh. were pennies and heartaches were gold, and right. on and on the list goes. Right. Things just immediately come to mind for me. Yeah, you know she. She was on the TV show all those years mm -hmm. with Porter, and Porter, of course, made, you know, gave Dolly the her the first leg up in the in the business. But as as Dolly grew, the depth of that catalog is stunning. It really is incredible. I had no idea really until I got into it. Did she write a lot of that stuff? Co-write? Uh, Dolly wrote most of it. 
Porter did some of the writing and co-wrote some of it. And then, of course, they did one or two covers. But most of that material, they wrote themselves. Mm -hmm. They produced it themselves. I mean, in those days, that was that was rare. Yeah. And they... No wonder he didn't want to let her go. <laughs> oh, yeah. What a massive talent. So, yeah, I mean, Victoria, the, the producer, called me up. She's the... Uh, the brains behind the operation and right out of the blue I, I knew her only a little bit she was uh on that ginger wild heart record in the uk a few years back and i kind of was a fan of his but i didn't know very little about her she contacted me off the website and <laughs> said do you want to do a dolly parton porter wagner tribute record and you'll be porter I was like, well, well sure. <laughs> <laughs> Would you have rather have been Dolly? Were you surprised say, right, that she right. <laughs> I don't think I could. I have the talent to be either one of them, honestly, oh. as I got into that. But Do you have the wardrobe to pull it off? <laughs> I probably That's could in my, in, my, in my dealing somewhere. But, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was an amazing thing to, to be Porter Wagner on this project because he's quite often underappreciated. All, all across the board, really. And it was it was scary to have to sing his parts. It was a frightening experience at, at the beginning to like, wow, this guy's really good. Hey, He's really good. When Marty Stewart did that final album, the Wagon Master album, that he produced on Porter, right. <laughs> he called Billy Bob Thornton as one of the musicians to play on it and asked Billy Bob if he knew who Porter Wagon was. And he said, hell we used to cry when he signed off when I was growing up in Arkansas. Oh. <laughs> oh. Isn't that fantastic? So, so he was in from he the get-go. in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So right. it sounds like you have that admiration going in when she called you, too. Yeah, it was it was an, a wonderful experience. To, I knew how talented Dolly is. Everybody in the world knows that mm -hmm. now. Everybody. Mm -hmm. But Porter, I don't think, gets the credit. And it was to sing those parts. And Linda, hear the songs and that he wrote and produced. He was a big part of the production of those records. It was very impressive. When you dove into this collection that goes so deep, how did you balance staying true to what the original works were like, but also wanting to bring your own sound and flair to it? Did it vary by song? Did you have one overarching approach to the whole the whole discography? Yeah, that's a good question. Whenever you do a record like this, do you? How far do you go in reinventing it? Mm -hmm. And Victoria produced the record. She deserves all the credit for how great this record sounds. She's an amazing producer and a total music head. Um, I basically just showed up for three days in, in England and hiked around the, the Stratford on nice. Avon. It was actually, the studio was on the Avon River, oh. you know, where Shakespeare hung out and fished and hiked. So I'd hike in the morning where Shakespeare hiked and then sing these parts on Dolly and Porter, uh, a Dolly Porter record. So she deserves all the credit. She deserved made, and made those hard choices, Aaron. To how do how much do we, you know, pay homage to these folks, and how much do we take it into a new direction? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I believe uh, the production on this record is as good as Brian Wilson. It's fantastic. It's really. Mm -hmm really brilliant well the nice part is you're in the uk so right. it kind of gives you the freedom to be a little chancier than if you'd maybe done it here in music city where like the people who played on these records may be playing on this record and it's like well that's not how we did it you know is, so, is there, exactly. so being that far away exactly. there's some freedom is you there know? a different vibe if you will to recording there versus here in nashville or here in the states the way they go about it i think so uh, english you know i mean they helped invent rock and roll <laughs> you know, yeah. so yeah. Uh, so they know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and we had a good studio. It was in this old farmhouse and mm -hmm. an old Tudor-style building. It was really fantastic. We stayed actually at the studio. And there was, you know, trees in the back. And as I said, it was on the Avon River. So, But, yeah, the, the musicians, and I'd like to mention a few of them. Some of them might be listening today. Um, did a wonderful job. We had, On double bass, we had uh, John Parker. On drums, we had Tim uh, Tim Jones. Lewis Berner Pugh was on acoustic. C.J. Hillman and Dave Foreman played uh, most of the electric guitars. Really, really fantastic. C.J. especially was wonderful. Uh, John Poole played electric bass. And then uh, Victoria did most of the vac backing vo vocals herself, along with the duet parts. Did you uh, tour the U.K. back in the day with Jason and the Scorchers? Are you familiar with the, with, with the terrain out there? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually one of the yeah. only American artists to tour the U.K. only using trains. 
Oh wow! I wow. pioneered well, that. Well, your like, rail's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I have one of those URL passes. Yeah. <laughs> and at first, the promoters and agents were like, "You can't do this. Your Americans cannot handle this. They, you guys have no experience <laughs> with how to deal with this level of of train travel." And I said, "No, I, th- I think I can." So I just always traveled with my little suitcase and my my guitar and my merch strapped to my back, and I travel all over the UK mm-hmm. uh, with train. That's that's how I do it. So I, I tour there every couple of years. It was just her last year. You're telling us your family farm bordered the Rock Island line? It did, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. trains in my blood. And I worked on the railroad, too. I worked for the Burlington Northern when I was in college. Oh, oh wow. did you? No kidding. I was a Gandhi yeah. dancer, yeah. Did you find that you had a huge following over there that you maybe didn't know? Because back then, it was a little harder to tell. I mean, there wasn't Instagram, there wasn't Facebook, there wasn't Twitter. You right. Remember, I remember Tom Petty telling the story that when they landed in London at Heathrow, there were 4,000 people there. He thought, like, the king or the queen was getting off the plane. They were there for him, and he couldn't buy airtime mm-hmm. in the U.S., but they were loving him over there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, it's uh, really important for any artist to develop Europe, I think. Yeah. And it's always there if you're willing to do the work. You, it's not exactly like it is here. It's a different system. And you got to learn that. It's mm-hmm. it's their world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. a guest in their world, yeah. and you have, to, you have to see it that way. Well, let's go to the album here, Life Rides a Train. Life Rides a Train. This was uh, written by Porter, actually wrote this one. And it's, you know, listen to the lyrics. It's, it's really cool. It's really a great hook. This is is WSM's Coffee, Country, and Cody. And this is Jason Ringenberg. He and Victoria Lidke have this incredible work that tributes Porter and Dolly. And I couldn't be happier to talk about any two folks in the business. The old wagon master was so good to me, <laughs> such an influence on me, long before I got to town and certainly after I, I got here. Now I've been here later this month, celebrate exactly 30 years. And one of the first to welcome me was Porter Wagoner. Grew up with that. And I... I remember when they would do, I think it was, please, oh, please, don't stop loving me. He would work in this reference to Hank Snow on the Grand Ole Opry. Oh, no, there goes Hank Snow. And <laughs> <laughs> every time they did it, he and his duet partners at the Opry when Hank was still alive. Had a great sense of humor. Uh, how well did you know Porter, or did you? I didn't. I, it was one of the few, uh, one, of the, one, of, one of the people on my list that I never got to meet Porter. I would have loved that. Well, he would have loved you too. It would have been yeah, it would, false. <laughs> yeah, but I will say, certainly in terms of imaging, I mean Porter's number one for me. Mm-hmm. You know, because I, I love that look that Porter did, and I that's what I use uh, to this day. It's it was a great variety show when you stop and think about it, because it had comedy with Spec Rhodes and, and right. it had that incredible musicianship. He would let the yeah. wagon master show off from time to time, and then. He was a host as well as the singing talent on the show too, right. which is a gift, in, as you well know. Mm-hmm. And he produced a lot of the show. Uh, he was he made he, he made the, the decision. He wasn't a figurehead. He made the the real decisions on that show. So tell me, uh, your track list, set list for this album is not loaded with a lot of things that people immediately recognize. There are a couple on there that they will. Well, how did you go about choosing the deep catalog stuff? Right. Uh, well, first I'll just say, you know, the, the name of the of the artist tag is Victoria Leadkey and Jason Ringenberg, more than words can tell. So that's hard to for anyone to spell. So to, if you want to find the music, it's really simple. Yeah. It's Victoria and Jason dot net. That's all you have to do. And you'll find out. Where, oh, OK. Where to I like the dot net. Yeah. Right. We don't Victoria do that much anymore. And Jason dot net. No spaces, nothing. So that's the easy way to do it because no one can spell those names. <laughs> but. Victoria, yeah, I think she had a purpose, a real defined idea. She spent a lot of time with this catalog. And she shared, she got it down to 20 and then shared it with me. And even at 20, I was like, I don't think I can do this. You, you just need to make the decisions, Victoria. So she opted to go, f- for the most part, most of the songs on the record are pretty obscure Dolly Porter songs. And so I hand it to, you know, I, I credit her for, for exposing those songs to a newer audience that probably didn't hear those songs the first time around. So she deserves a credit for that, but she did try to find really obscure songs, except for there's a few that everyone's going to recognize, but most of them they're, you got to dig deep to find those songs. Sounds of nature. Something we're going to play for the next segment. What, you know, the backstory on it at all? Yeah. Sounds of nature was one I insisted on. Victoria had it on her list. But I said, we have to do this song. It's so it's so cool. You know, back in the 50s and 60s, there was a real connection between 
a lot of country songwriters and country artists really really talked about the beauty of nature and how oh, it is, yeah. how important it is to to experience it and appreciate it it's it's god's gift to us you know so i thought it was important to to make that statement uh, sounds of nature both of them wrote it dolly and porter wrote the song and it, it's one of the i i think it's a, a perfect way to 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 talk about how beautiful nature is and how important it is Quite a string arrangement there. Gives it that little. Isn't that pretty? Thing. That's yeah, really beautiful. It really is, and it's uh, Victoria Leidke is how she Leidke Leidke yeah, with a long right. e, and right. that's Jason Ringenberg. And the album is more than words can tell. It's a tribute to Porter and Dolly. Mm -hmm. uh, is there uh, another album in the works where you do Porter Wagoner recitations? Please tell me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I could just hear you doing Skid Row Joe and breaking all our hearts. Right oh here. boy, that would uh, be that would be something special, no doubt. <laughs> No doubt. <laughs> well, we're going to play one of the hits, Last Thing on My Mind. Yeah, and that's, that's uh, not a Dolly or Porter song, is it? Right. Tom Paxson wrote this one. Okay. It came from the folk world, and Dolly and Porter, you know, brought it into the country world. And we decided to do one of, you know, one of the, their famous tracks, so this is what we decided to do yeah. on this, right? And last, Porter. Last Thing on My Mind, right. With different duet partners through the years at the Opry after Dolly was gone and they weren't duetting anymore. Uh, this was a standard in his Grand Ole Opry shows, as you right. know. You know. Last thing on my mind. Fantastic song! Wow, yeah. what a what a brilliant song. Great well, you're song. a fantastic guy, Jason Ringenberg. It's, Thanks for coming to see us. It's my pleasure. I just want to say, you know, Coffee Cody, Country and Cody is an is an American treasure. God bless you all for what you do. Seriously, <laughs> no, I'm serious. This is an American treasure. Well, I'm just so feel so honored to be part of this. I'm a listener. And y'all rock. It's a fantastic show. You rock, really? Jason. Well, Thank um, you. And you'll be at Brooklyn Bowl soon. Brooklyn Bowl, yeah, yeah doing the National Record Store Day celebration. Yeah. 19th. That's Charlie's big day. Yeah, and then a few uh, Farmer Jason uh, outings as well on the calendar. Yeah, I'm doing quite a few of my children's character yeah. Farmer Jason shows, too. Yeah, always always <laughs> got to do that. That's <laughs> Got to keep, keep, keep hooked up with the five-year-olds, that's for sure. <laughs> Brooklyn Bowl, that show is Friday, April 19th with Jason Ringenberg. It's... Coffee, Country, and Cody on WSM. I don't ever really understood how you pronounce his last name, but he was the base man for Grand Funk Railroad. Mel, do you know, Charlie, was it Shocker? S-C-H-A-C-H-E-R. Mm -hmm. Looks like it almost have to be that. But it's his birthday today. He is 73. Saw Grand Funk Railroad during the We Are American Band tour. Ah, uh, okay. That gold vinyl that came with that. That single and that album. Taking Care of Business, too? Is that the No, that was the Bachman Turner. Oh, okay. Yeah, I never saw them. Okay. But I did see Grand Funk Railroad. Mm -hmm. John Schneider, who's been a guest many times through the years on this show, mm -hmm. 64 today. Julian Lennon, son of John, is 61. Birth anniversary. Here you go, Charlie. John Havlicek. Oh, Celtic great. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, Betty. Mm. Betty Ford and Baseball Hall of Famer. Gary Carter- the Expos and, and, and Braves, uh, right? Cubs? Braves or Dodgers? No, Braves. I think. Okay. I can't help you. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> well, now that I say that, you're, you're making me think I'm wrong. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, I don't no. mean to. And well, it is the well, 1980 television anniversary. Everybody, you'd think the eclipse is a big deal mm. here in 2024. Later uh -huh. on today, about 203, 204, somewhere like that, mm -hmm. yeah. in the Central Time Zone for Nashville. Yes. For it's maximum 95% eclipse, mm -hmm. um, a maximum of effectiveness, if you will. Ah. 1980, we were all gathered in the living room to watch Kenny Rogers premiering on Aww. CBS as The Gambler. Oh, my goodness. What was his name? Brady Hawks? I just his know character. John Schlitz was just counting the money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That he was. <laughs> As long as that check clears, you can put any name you want to on there. Right. We're both wrong about Gary Carter, by the way. Gary Carter. New York Mets. After the Expos. Oh, After the, oh, the Mets. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The Mets, the Mets, the Mets. Well, it was a big day in television yesterday, too, mm -hmm. because the 2024 CMT Music Awards happened in Austin, Texas. Miss Kelsey Ballerini was the host again and uh, had a jaw-dropping Nine outfit changes from Ooh. the red carpet to the end of the show. Here are a few of those looks right now on Circle Country. Uh, very much giving Country Barbie of the Barbie movie here <laughs> well, on now the Charlie right. Charlie has no business of a young man his age looking at that one in the middle there. You can see through that one. Don't, Is that the don't. one you were talking That's about? That's like the, the cellophane with the glitter ball, right? I think uh, it's like a mesh glitter 
thing. Well, okay. I can't tell. Yeah. John Conley is going to bring that to the Grand Ole Opry for the male side of things. I'm just saying. I'm going to see to it. Well, she was celebrating the 10th anniversary. <laughs> That's right. You just move on. Of her breakthrough. Yep. Now we're just going to keep going. Of her breakthrough hit, Love Me Like You Mean It. <laughs> she did a more grown-up version of the song, we will say. And uh, got to give a shout-out to one of the writers on that song, our friend Lance Carpenter. Uh, that was Kelsey's breakthrough hit. And it's always crazy when you live in Nashville and you know these folks that have something to do or have touched something major that's happening on TV. And Lance just posted a video, him watching it on his TV at home. <laughs> that's the song I wrote, Changed My Life. So good for him and good for her. Uh, Kelsey also revealed that it would be her last time hosting the CMT Awards. I don't know if I believe her. It's kind of like the Elton John farewell, farewell tour thing. You know, I think she'll come back. Um, the show also featured loads of performances with stars like Jason Aldean, Megan Maroney, Keith Urban, Sam Hunt. Uh, there was a collaboration between Little Big Town and Sugarland. They did a Phil Collins song, and that was giving them a preview of their upcoming tour together. That's insane. And the most emotional moment of the night was a special tribute to the late Toby Keith. We lost Toby in February after his battle with cancer. Uh, that performance included Brooks and Dunn, should have been a cowboy, Sammy Hagar, heck yeah, mm -hmm. on I Love This Bar, and Lainey on How Do You Like Me Now. We might have a picture of Sammy Hagar with his Toby Keith shirt. He's just <laughs> absolutely rocking out. And uh, the other thing that is absolutely worth noting is Jelly Roll being on an absolute role of his own. He emerged as the night's top winner at the 2024 CMT Music Awards. He took home three trophies, including the show's top award, Video of the Year, Male Video of the Year, and CMT Performance of the Year, all for his song, Need a Favor. Uh, the performance award that he won was actually for the performance he did of the song last year on the CMTs, and it's not an award show without a hype Jelly Roll speech. Let's take a listen to what he Billy did. Bob Thornton just gave me my third trophy of the night, y'all! Man, Cody Johnson, I'm not going to tell you anything up here. I don't tell you on the phone, but I love you, brother. You are my favorite cowboy forever, forever, and ever. And one of my best friends in the business. I love you. Kelsey Ballerini, you know what I think of you too, girl. You go, baby. Cody Johnson giving Jelly Roll a big fat kiss on the cheek as he went up to accept that award. Well, I'm glad and, Larry uh, Mahan's no longer around to hear this kind of talk out loud in public. <laughs> huh? And <laughs> Jelly is the first artist to win back-to-back -back awards for Male Video of the Year in over a decade. He won three awards last year and three awards this year. So, let's go Jelly Roll. Rolling just along. All right. And uh, <laughs> Lainey Wilson, also uh, one of Jelly Roll's besties, she cleaned up too. Uh, she won Female Video of the Year for her song, Watermelon Moonshine. Uh, and true to form, she delivered a high energy version of her hit, Country's Cool Again, uh, and paid tribute to Toby Keith in that tribute performance that they did. And one of the most eloquent speech givers at an award show also is Lainey Wilson. Here is the respect she paid to her fellow nominees last night. My heart is beating out of my chest. I'm not even going to lie. I just want to say, first of all, every single girl that was in this category, um, all of them are dear friends, and they work their tail off, and they, and they just dedicate their life to creating music and creating this vision and bringing it to life. And I'm so honored to be a part of this category. It's, it's really unreal watching these girls do what they do. My next goal this year is to find out who Lainey Wilson's hair extension person is because her <laughs> hair deserves an award of its own. Those pigtail braids, my goodness. Mm -hmm. So wrapping up the rest of the awards, duo and group video of the year, Dan and Shay with Save Me the Trouble. Mm -hmm. Collaborative video of the year, Carly Pierce and Chris Stapleton for We Don't Fight Anymore. Breakthrough female video, Ashley Cook. Breakthrough male video, Warren Ziders with Pretty Little Poison, and uh, CMT <laughs> Performance of the Year. Oh, I'm sorry. Bra um, the first award of the night, I'm sorry. The CMT Digital First Performance of the Year, Scotty McCreary with It Matters to Her. Just, you know, the pregame celebration to his Opry induction coming up on April 20th. Mm -hmm. So go, Scotty. It's a two-show night. Two Opry.com for tickets and information. <laughs> All right. The solar eclipse and weather. The fog or dew or other precipitation resulting from an eclipse was considered dangerous historically. 
The Japanese thought that poison would drop from the sky, so they covered their wells. Ooh. In Transylvania, they believed that when the eclipse arrived, so did the plague. That's something to look okay. forward to tomorrow. Oh okay. Uh, Today. Uh, Not again. Well, I guess it's coming. Oh, later. yeah. Okay. Tomorrow you wake up, you got a rash. You go, oh, well, that's that's oh. the end of that. All right. Uh, Alaskan <laughs> natives believed that the moisture and dew could cause sickness. Dishes were turned upside down. Affected utensils were washed. The mischievous black squirrel. Yes, that, that goes back to. Uh, but in Cambodia, one of my favorites, <laughs> mm-hmm. 1995, instead of screaming and banging during a solar eclipse to scare away the, the evil spirits, Soldiers, <laughs> Cambodian soldiers, shot into the air to scare the mythical dragon from the sky. There were scattered casualties from bullets that. Oh. What goes yeah, up yeah. must <laughs> come down. Yeah. Uh. Gravity. Available. New episodes of My Opry Debut. Well, this next guest is debuting, so making history tonight at the Grand Ole. I absolutely love stepping off the mic, or at least giving them a chorus to sing and letting them have it. When I see a whole crowd singing one song together, and they're not worried about anything else in the world, they're completely in one moment at one time, and it's the only time that all those people will be in the same building, same night, the same time. Yeah, that's one thing that I'm very appreciative of, of getting to do that every single night. I'm Wyatt Flores, and this is my Opry debut. There were more people in the Grand Ole Opry House, I mean, a lot more people than in Morrison, Oklahoma, his hometown's population that oh night. Oh, my and he gosh. He did the Grand Ole Good Opry. for him. <laughs> and he's got this song. I'm going to make it a pick of the week soon. Maybe this week. I haven't Ooh. made my mind for this week's pick. But it's called Wildcat. Mm-hmm. And he was the high school mascot. And Morrison, Oklahoma High School played <gasps> eight-man football, I want to say. It wasn't six-man. It would be eight-man. And they were kings forever with multiple state championships everybody knows that little town north of stillwater in oklahoma i'm i'm so, guessing the wildcat was the mascot yes or, okay yep, well yep. being being close to wyatt's age the fact that he was a wildcat uh him growing up in the age of high school musical them being the wildcats i'm sure that was the coolest thing that he got to be the mascot yeah he for said that. He go was him terrible at football <laughs> but he was a great mascot hey we need great mascots that's awesome and you can watch that full episode with wyatt flores of morrison oklahoma slash stillwater my opry debut with wyatt on the opry's youtube channel a lot of other ones are up there too recent Opry debuts. Aaron Cooper? We are still recapping the CMT Music Awards that happened last night. And Trisha Yearwood, she's had a lot of milestones happening. She was just honored with an inaugural award for the CMT Awards. We will recap what she won and what she had to say about it. And the heartbreaking dream that inspired Carly Pierce's most recent song. She also won a CMT Music Award last night. And while I'm not very good at statistics, I know when they can be impressive and what an impressive one looks like. We're going to look at what Beyonce's album has done for some local Nashville country artists that she featured on Cowboy Carter. That's coming up in just a little bit. Coffee, country, and Cody. I want y'all to meet Tyler Chambers from Douglas, Georgia, this morning. Tractor driving Tyler Chambers. I read that uh, that you grew up driving a tractor, and then I, I saw pictures. Looks like you're the grandfather in your grandfather's lap on a tractor. Yes, sir. What was his name? name? His name was Gene. Gene Chambers. <laughs> he, uh, yeah. So what you a great literally name. grew up on a tractor. I did. I mean, as much as I could, you know. And, and honestly, I spent most of the time. On a tractor here in Tennessee, I drove one down Broadway for about four years. As a part of the transportainment industry, right? I was paying my bills. I didn't. Want, I didn't want to. <laughs> I didn't want a whole lot to do with all that stuff. What were you? Pull- story. What were you pulling with your tractor? People. But like, do you have a horror story? A horror, like, horror, were they in a tub? Were they in a hot tub or no? Were they no, fully sir. clothed. No, sir. They were fully clothed. Okay. Yeah. I oh, mean, cool. I, I had to keep my eyes on the road, anyways. You know, <laughs> that's quite quite a lot. Somebody needed to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we often, Charlie and I, have been here a long time before transportainment in this town and just oh, like, gosh, how yeah. is some of this stuff legal? Oh, somebody. I don't got, know. Somebody's got pictures, like with goat, with goats or something. I <laughs> with mean, it's goats. Serious. I mean, it's not good. So and this is the only way. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it yeah. shouldn't be legal. Yeah. <laughs> you got a debut EP coming out. Country don't come out. And uh, Dallas Davidson figures prominently, a fellow Georgian, in your story. Uh, tell us about that relationship. Did you know each other before you got to town, or? 
No, sir. Um, we met through Dylan Marlowe, who sing who sings on "Roads I Go Down," um, which we're gonna hear the, here in just a little bit. Yeah, and I'm excited for everybody to hear that one. But he signed Dylan a while back, and Dylan and I are just good buddies, and kind of like by proximity and playing shows together. Dallas and I got to know each other a little bit, and I think we were playing in St. Simons a couple years ago, mm-hmm. and I was talking to Cade and Alyssa and Dallas, and they were. I think Cade was like, you know, what are you doing for management or arts development stuff? And I just said, you know, I was kind of waiting on y'all <laughs> to, to ask me that. And they were like, okay, well, we're on the same page, so let's just see what we can work out. And ever since then, Dallas and I have just really gotten to know each other a lot better. And, you know, he's kind of made the transition back into writing more and being more involved in the Nashville scene and stuff. So it's just been really cool to have him hands-on through all of this. And, yeah, he's I, I could not say – better things about dallas and one of the original peach pickers that's right that's right yeah man that's, <laughs> that's quite a group and uh so proud to see red akins going to the songwriters hall of fame a couple yeah, of years back he that's, deserves it uh, i saw a, a quote from you where you said that uh i knew if there was something i wanted to be good at <laughs> it was country music <laughs> yes sir so did your family we go back to the tractor your family farmed or did they so do that on the side and have other jobs my fam- i'm so blessed man my family you know so i was adopted when i was two and my uh my grandfather my dad's dad was an entrepreneur he was an engineer uh i mean he started multiple businesses throughout his life um a bank in our hometown a poultry business he was the president of the georgia cattlemen's association for a long time and uh, just really, like, from an early age, you know, his office in our house was, you know, full of plaques that um, said, <laughs> that just talked about the good things that he did for his community, rather than, like, you know, all these accolades and money and stuff, which I'm sure, you know, you know that comes with it. But he was just a successful man and a good person. So from an early age, country music was kind of one of those things that, you know, resonated with my soul. And... It was something that I wanted to resonate with other, you know, I wanted to do that to other people and uh, in a good way. So, and I just through had, music in this, yes, sir, case. yes, sir, yeah. yeah. So, my grandfather had a lot to do, or my family in general, because you know they never made me feel like I was crazy for doing this, even when I, they probably <laughs> any should have been. connection to your biological parents. No, I mean, my, my 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 family is my family. You know, yeah. I mean, it's just kind of like. You have no interest in that. I mean, it's not something that I necessarily want to talk about, to be honest. But, you know, I will say just like, you know, like you, you get a, I'm not, I'm not nowhere near like a, <laughs> like a pound dog or something, but it's the kind of love that you just, that dog is going to love you more, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, sure. And that's how I feel my fam- about my family. You know, they did something for me that nobody could really fathom doing for somebody and i can't understand it you know and uh just means a lot yeah what was your first live performance as you remember stage performance in douglas georgia or was it somewhere nearby man it wasn't in douglas georgia it was actually here um in nashville and uh it was at douglas is not big enough no, I just I didn't I didn't have the confidence. <laughs> Did and also, in front, of, front of people who knew you. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. That's, and a, I, that's the toughest crowd, it was, right? It was a smart move. On yeah. my part, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you that much. Um, anyway, or at least my buddies wouldn't let me. I don't think they they probably would just been like, man, not yet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But uh, it was a, it was a, up here at Slider House. Um, oh, I don't even yeah. know if it's still Slider House anymore, but. I definitely know that name, but things come and go so quickly here in Nashville. It could be a completely new trendy bar I think by it's, now. I think it still is. Okay, good. This was, actually, it probably wasn't even called Slider House, but this was about seven years ago. And I remember having some family in town, mm-hmm. some of my cousins from Colorado, and I was like, hey, you know, I'm playing the show tonight. Y'all should, y'all should come by. And I'd never sang on a microphone, <laughs> played live for anybody. Oh, my gosh. And I just absolutely bombed it. And I invited them just willingly to <laughs> witness that. So <laughs> to that witness was, it. He's a confident man. <laughs> yeah. Aww. And then you got it out of the way. And yeah, but you it, got you know, that done. Yeah, it's just one of those things like uh, – you know you're going to have to put yourself in those situations over and over again if you want to get better at it. So I was yeah. just like, whatever. Roads I Go Down, you and mm-hmm. Dylan Marlowe together. Give us a backstory on this song. You, co- you Two of you co-write it? Yeah, we wrote it with uh, – I wrote it with Dylan 
my buddy Damon Osborne and Zach Albin, the guy who produced this record, um, it was Damon's idea. And we were doing this thing on a retreat where I would kind of go in and out of writer, different writers' rooms and give my two cents on melody or hook here and then do the same thing in, in this room. And that day, that song, um, luckily I probably stepped out of the room more, more than I stayed in it that day and let them kind of do their thing mm-hmm. and just kind of sprinkled in my two cents and stuff throughout the day. And I remember once Zach got the demo worked up, we all, that's the only time I've ever written a song. And we were like, I think we did something good here. <laughs> like for sure we were, everybody was really excited about it. And you know, Dylan, if you know Dylan, he's the type of guy, like he's not just going to blow smoke. And I knew he heard the demo and he called me. He's like, Hey man, if this is something you'd let me sing on, this would be the song that I would want to do it. So in that moment I was like, okay, it is good because obviously he's got a, song on the radio right now. He gave now. it the credibility He's, that you yeah, needed, sure. the confidence. Yeah. Absolutely, sure. yeah. Okay. All right. Wonder how the old folks are at home. Tyler Chambers is in studio with us this morning. Douglas, Georgia. What's going on at the Chick-fil-A or the Cupboard Wagon <laughs> Country Buffet or the Huddle House? All located Huddle in House. upwardly mobile 11,722 Georgians that know how to act. Mostly. Mostly. We, used Mostly. Have, we used to have a Huddle House right downtown. That was good late night eating when you lived downtown as a young man. What was that one? The Huddle House. The Huddle, Ooh, Huddle, Huddle House. House. It is. Yeah, man. Mm. It is good eating. Yeah. So we're going to play and sing first in this segment. Well, I was going to play a song that I wrote with my buddy uh, Logan Wall. It's called Didn't Love Her If You Don't. It's on my, uh, obviously, the new EP. And, uh, and what's the title again? It's called Didn't Love Her If You Don't. Interesting. It just talks about how, you know, if you're kind of going through it, you know, it it does mean that there was something there and it's all right. And, you know, everybody's human. And if you feel like nowadays dudes kind of just something like that happens, they just kind of, you know, push the beach ball under the water and act like it doesn't bother them. Aaron, would you like to weigh in on this? Uh, We'll evaluate once I hear this very beautiful song live. We will we will determine a verdict. Okay. <laughs> Coffee Country and Cody Live. I especially loved the line about calling your mama. I got to do that as soon as we get off the show. Very, very well. So I, I love your Instagram page. you got Thank a lot you. of great photos on there. Thank you. But your biggest co-star on this page is the dog. And the do- the, I, what is the dog? I don't see a name on any of these His photos. His name's Cotton. Man, he's a good dog. Aww. He is. Yeah. <laughs> he's that dog that you get one time in your life. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm. yeah. All right, so tell me about what a great turkey hunter you are. Don't Ooh. lie now. Don't lie. Okay. Don't hold back. By the way, you look good in the camo, but Thank your you. partner in the Valentine's Day photo looks a little better in the camo than I, you do. I agree. Yeah. I agree, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, she, uh, she went duck hunting with me a couple couple times last year, and I'm, I think she shot some. At least that's what we think. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, no, she's she holding did. two. She did. Uh, she did. Do we not give her credit for those? Oh no. Yeah. We. She tagged them. Okay. No, she okay. tagged them. I told you her. Was, I said, okay. No, go ahead. Sorry. No. Go ahead. You were finishing up. She tagged them in what? You told her what? Oh, I just. I have to tell her. You know. She. Had, I think we're going to go turkey hunting this weekend. I have to tell her. You know. We got to buy a license. We got to be legal. Because. Okay. And what's her name? Her name is Morgan Reed. So, enter to win a turkey hunt yeah. with the founder of official bone collector, Michael Waddell, who's been a guest on this show mm-hmm. with the National Wild Turkey mm-hmm. Federation yep. through the years coming to the hotel. And me at Dallas Davidson's Woodsong Farm. Does Dallas know? Do y'all have hunting privileges? Or y'all just going to show up? <laughs> or, or we just what? Showing up. Oh, no. We, uh, we're, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's it's safe to say that me and Waddy and Dow will probably get along just fine. And <laughs> okay. there, will be, there will be a lot of hooping and hollering <laughs> um, in some Tennessee hills if we get one. <laughs> the, the trip will include a weekend of turkey hunt and campfire songs featuring special guests. And you can find out more on his socials about that. One at Turkey Hunt with Michael Waddell and Tyler Chambers, who's our special guest this morning. So, got any plans for the eclipse about 2 o'clock this afternoon? <laughs> Man, I'm I'm gonna be writing a song. Okay. I don't, I don't. I I'm just trusting the Lord, honestly, with all that stuff. I don't have time to like worry about the world world ending. Honestly, <laughs> I got I got I saw, so much going on. If it does, it does. There's nothing I can do about it. Because we experienced the 2017 mm-hmm. and total I was here darkness. That, yeah. Were you, were you mm-hmm. here already? 
And I, uh, you were out on the Opry Plaza, Charlie. Yeah, you pulled Ash- up some video earlier. That was yeah. so cool. Yeah, Ashley McBride played. We had a big party out on the plaza for the oh, Eclipse that's awesome. show. But that was 100 percenter. I think oh, we're getting yeah. about 95 this time. Listen to this. So. That 2017 eclipse was the first visible in the United States skies in nearly four decades. Its path of totality spanned from Salem, Oregon mm-hmm. to Charleston, South Carolina. Whoa. And included a pass over Nashville. It was the first eclipse in 99 years visible across the entire country. Oh, wow. That's wild. Yeah. Today's will not be visible across the entire no, country. Right. And it's like a 115-mile wide path. We just happen to be on it for about 95% totality. Mm-hmm. Huh. I read. I'm, I'm probably going to miss it, too. I think I'm going to take a nap. Okay. So yeah. you're not it's alone. A good time to take a nap. <laughs> we miss It'll a lot dark. of things on our schedule. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Play us one more before you go, please. Yeah, sure. So... Uh, I think you mentioned off the air you were going to do something we hadn't heard before. Yeah, you know. And by the way, the new I won't mention that EP again. It's Country Don't Come Out. It's available now wherever you stream your music, wherever you get your music, from yeah. Tyler Chambers. Everywhere you can stream it. Tyler yeah. Chambers playing live for us on Coffee Country and Cody. We certainly appreciate it and wish you all the best. Congratulations on that cut, yeah. that title track. That's Thank you all so much. It's good to be Chase Beckham. It's good to know Chase Beckham. Yeah. And it's really good to have your song cut by Chase Beckham. Mm-hmm. Amen. Coming up, <laughs> 23, the success of the album that that's on. Exactly. And I see uh, you're rocking some uh, Eric Church Field and Stream merch. Very nice. Yes, sir. Yeah, you know, um, I always think about Field and Stream and the old Roebuck stuff, and we throw them in country songs, and then I saw, you know, here recently that that they just, I guess, bought the the, the name or the... The rights you know, to the, the brand or the something. Brand, yeah. yeah, and I was like, that's really cool. So I would love to support, you know that business especially if it's Eric and you know mm-hmm. yeah. That stuff so yeah Field and Stream and Sports Illustrated my first two subscriptions in life magazines <laughs> 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 yeah <laughs> thank you for coming to see us come back sometime thank all y'all right. so much you know, yeah. Coffee Country and Cody WSM Radio all our Circle streaming platforms CircleNow.com you can link and Circle Country uh, Circle Now CircleCountry.com for the links and Circle Now is available in your app store this is Coffee Country and Cody. Hey, Kelly Sutton took a weekend to Disney with some girlfriends. Have we heard anything from her? Last we heard, she was stuck <laughs> on Buzz Lightyear. Uh, no kidding. So, yeah, Worst so. places to be stuck. But, oh, absolutely. Uh, so, I mean, you got a weapon, and I mean, it's fine. But wait yeah, a minute. So. Infinity and beyond is where you're going. Did she go beyond? Well, you, well where, where, are you, where are you on the scale if you're stuck on Buzz Lightyear? Yeah, I think if you go to Disney far enough, long enough and often enough, you get stuck on something. We yeah. were stuck on Rise of the Resistance for oh, almost an hour what? last time we went. Yeah. That is crazy. Yeah. No. <laughs> Happens. Uh, okay. But they give you world. nice perks if you if you get stuck. That's true. <laughs> hey, all right. So it's not a bad thing, really. On second thought, <laughs> yeah. I want to get stuck on a okay. Disney ride yeah. immediately. Yeah. So Erin Cooper is doing entertainment this morning. That I am. All right. Miss Trisha Yearwood. She has celebrated several milestones recently. A big one with the Grand Ole Opry a few weeks ago. And last night at the CMT Music Awards, she received the inaugural June Carter Cash Humanitarian Award. That award recognizes an artist who demonstrates an exceptional dedication to their community. And June Connor Cash, of course, as we know, she was dedicated to giving back. She actively supported all kinds of charitable organizations, including St. Jude. And Trisha, as eloquent as she is, of course, was so gracious to receive the first ever one of these awards. Let's take a listen to what she had to say. This is not... This is not one of those, oh, look what I can do, look what I accomplished. I really look at this as a challenge and a calling just to be better. Um, Garth and I believe to whom much is given, much is expected. And if you know me, my mantra is love one another. And so my challenge to all of us is to not just say it, but let's actually go out there and do it. Thank you. She also remarked about how, like June Carter Cash, she... Trisha is married to a force who is also her biggest supporter, of course, none other than Mr. Garth Brooks. So we are so excited for Trisha. And she premiered a new song last night on the CMT Music Awards. She co-wrote it with Aaron Enderlin, my name twin, our friend of the show, and Jim Moose Brown. Very uh, frequent uh, visitors here on Coffee Country and But Cody. you're a Y, and Aaron, and she's an I, Aaron. Yes. Aaron Enderlin can find souvenir magnets at gift shops. I cannot, but... Uh, Thanks, Mom. Thanks, I know. Dad. That's okay. Appreciate That's that. Fine. Yeah. It's okay. Um, and the, the song that she premiered is called Put It in a Song, and that is going to be from her upcoming album with a bunch of other Trisha Penn songs. So, a big night for Trisha Yearwood. Just opened the bar downtown. Now we're winning humanitarian awards. Here she is. Matter who was right or wrong, just put.
put it in a song. Ooh, you know what it reminds me of? Bust to St. Cloud. Mm-hmm. Kind of got that same sort of feel. Or song remembers when. Ooh. Yeah. So beautiful. All right, another CMT award winner last night was Carly Pierce for her performance with Chris Stapleton and We Don't Fight Anymore. And she revealed that her most recent song, My Place, actually came from a heartbreaking dream that she said that she had. The song My Place is out now, and she wrote it with Lauren Hungate and Jordan Reynolds. She says it paints the picture of one's post-breakup life and the struggle to cope with what was. Uh, let's go ahead and take a listen to the song, and I'll give you some more backstory my business trying to picture for by sex with the rhythm if she does things that I didn't wonder what the hell I'm wondering for it ain't my place cause it ain't my place anymore it ain't my place Boy, anymore that line I'm wondering what I'm wondering for Woo! Ooh. trying to move on and we were remarking a little earlier, Ashley Cook, her song that she also won a CMT award for last night, Your Place. This is kind of like a sister song to that, which is really cool. Uh, this song is going to be from her fourth or her upcoming album, uh, Hummingbird. That's coming out on June 14th. And she's currently on the road with Tim McGraw. And I got a, an advance on Hummingbird on that single, the title track mm-hmm. of the album when it first came out. It's been a few weeks ago. And that's terrific, too. So. Whew. Cannot wait for that one. And uh, it's not very often I will do a story about statistics and math because there's a reason that I work in this world and it's because I'm not great with numbers. However, I can recognize when a number is pretty impressive. So as we know, Cowboy Carter, Beyonce's country album, dropped a few weeks ago. And following its release, several artists that are black country artists that she featured on the album have had huge spikes in first-time listeners, particularly on Spotify. So on her song Blackbird, she featured a few other female black country artists, including Britney Spencer. And since releasing this album, first time listeners for Britney Spencer have increased 175%. Tanner Adele, 125%. Raina Roberts, 125%. And Tierra Kennedy, 110%. All from this one song they did with Beyonce. Ride that Beyonce train to glory, baby. That's, I mean, that's As what Jerry we were, Reed would say if you were here. That is what we were saying about this, this album. I know people were wondering what Uh-oh. it was going to be like when it came out, but the fact that she's using artists who have been putting in the work in the country space for a while and lifting them up is really cool. And if a first-time listener for Beyonce could even be possible, as if no one has heard her before, uh, Beyonce herself with this country release her listenership for the first time has increased by 85 percent so some crazy stats for many friends of coffee country and cody and again thank you aaron entertainment today filling in for kelly sutton and happy birthday to a a frequent guest on coffee country and cody longtime friend of ours john schneider all right uh the other pop quiz question earlier about the eclipse had to do with the the first ever recorded eclipse and your answer was 1912 because i thought you meant like video recorded or captured in some way not stop being a millennial you. No. Uh, I said uh, 2500 BC. <laughs> uh, November the 30th, 3340, before the Common Era or BCE. Okay. Uh, it's a way on back there <laughs> oh, if well, Bill Monroe is, is here. Is. <laughs> yeah, people must have freaked out back there. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Ringenberg, we will encore his in studio visit with us a little earlier on tomorrow's show. And man, we had a great sit down with a guy who just had a number one record. His first ever very emotional story. George Burge is his name and Mind on You. Now he's followed it up with cowboy songs. Tomorrow's show. Yeah!